welcome to Marie's Scrappy Creations, where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. And I know so many of you have been waiting for today's tutorial, and I'm excited too. What's not to be excited about? So the last time we got together, we talked about sewing our panels for our freestyle tote bag. So I have two bags worth of panels to work with, and I'm only going to be working with one today, probably. We'll see what happens. It could get wild and crazy around here. But let's take a look. This is side one, and this is side two of my freestyle scrappy, tulip pink scrappy tote bag. And then I have, look at these. These are some Lorelei Harris design. And I think these roosters, chickens, are they roosters? The roosters have combs, right? <laughs> They're adorable, look at these. Okay, so today we're going to start working on our panels. Last time we got together, I explained what the series was going to be about and I told you guys to get started to make your panels and to quilt them. These are quilted. Now, maybe you did some uh, quilt as you go. You stitched and flipped. You, you could have done free motion quilting. Maybe you did what I did. I used a serpentine stitch. Maybe you match stick quilted. It doesn't matter. As long as you quilted your layers together, you're great. You're spot on with where you need to be for today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the sewing table and then we're going to start with some embellishments as well as we're going to add a pocket or two. All right. And I'm going to show you how to do a welt zipper pocket okay and for that one I chose to use my tulip pink scrappy bag to show you that method now there are other pockets that you could put on the outside of your tote bag but since those same could also go into the lining I'm going to show you a different variation in the next tutorial. But let's go over to the sewing table. We're going to get started because this is exciting. For any of you who are nervous about this, please don't be. I'm going to walk you step by step. I wouldn't leave you back there. You're going to be right with me. Even if you've only done a few zippers, maybe you've never done a zipper. This is flat out the easiest way to put in a zipper. Even though it looks difficult, you're going to pull this off. You're going to have an awesome, absolutely awesome freestyle bag that you're going to be so proud of. And I'm going to be proud of you too. So let's go get this started. Grab your panels and meet me over there. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're going to need. Now, before we start with the zipper pocket, I am going to show you something that I'm going to do to embellish it. But for right now, I'm going to tell you what you'll need if you do what I'm going to do with my pocket. So of course, you're going to need your two bag panels all prepped and ready to go. You, you could put a welt pocket on both sides if you want to, that's totally up to you. I'm going to do it on this side of mine. On this front, I'm going to put some embellishments, which we will talk about. So what you're going to need, your two panels, and then if you put in a welt pocket, you're going to need the pocket. <laughs> So I've cut my pocket in two pieces, okay? And I have backed these with SF-101. That will be in a link in the description box. You want just a lightweight interfacing on your pockets. Now, or this is a pocket. There is a way, and usually it's how I do it, I only make one piece, so it would look like this. 
but since for many of you this will be your first welt pocket i'm just going to show you in two separate pieces so these measure 10 by eight and a half but they correspond to my bag size and your bag size may differ and i'm going to tell you how to figure that out in just a moment you may want to use some of this wonder tape zipper tape it's called all sorts of things double-sided tape okay that will help hold your zipper in now i'm using a number three zipper which is a standard zipper size so if if you went to joanne or walmart and you bought the zipper in the package it's probably a number three okay and that's what i'm going to use although this is zipper by the yard so i have my zipper pull separate and if you do it this way make sure to prep your edges so they don't fray and if you want to know how to put these on i'm going to leave a link down below to one of my youtube shorts that shows how to put those on okay so maybe on your bag you might like to embellish it with some lace now I'm just throwing ideas out there. This is your bag. It is a freestyle bag and it's your style. Now let's say you had some pretty, anything at all to embellish. It could be buttons. Uh, I don't think I have a button right here, but let's pretend <laughs> this was a button. You could certainly put buttons or rickrack or lace. You possibly for something like this, Maybe you could fussy cut something and, and stitch it onto the center. What I'm going to do is I have a piece of a selvage edge. And I'm going to cut that. Somewhere here I have my small ruler. <laughs> I'm going to trim this because I thought it would look cute because this is from the Curiouser and Curiouser line. So I thought it might be nice to stitch this on here. It adds character. I just really like this sort of thing. So I'm going to trim this. I'm gonna save this because this could go on somewhere else. So depending on what you use, for fabric. Hmm. I wonder if I should put Free Spirit Presents. I think so. I think I'm going to do that. I'll trim that down just a little bit. And we're going to apply Heat and Bond Light, which I will also link down below. But this is just one way that you have of embellishing your freestyle bag. So whatever size this is, I'm going to need a piece of heat and bond light in that size. So let's see, that measures about seven and an eighth by just a little better than half an inch. So I always use my other rotary cutting blade when I'm not cutting fabric. When I'm cutting anything other than fabric, I use this one. And you'll need your iron for this if you're using this to embellish. I don't like this rotary cutter. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I probably just don't know how to use it. I'm used to one brand and then, you know, we get used to these things. I brought you to the ironing board with me so I have this piece 
and this is the heat and bond light. You're going to take the rough side. You can see that it has little bubbles. It almost feels like just, it's not sandpaper at all, but it's, it's a rougher side. You put the rougher side towards the, the wrong side. And then you take your iron and it doesn't take very much. Oops, I hope I have that warm enough. I need to trim this a little bit because I've got a little bit more of the pink on there than what I thought right up, right up here. So I'll trim that off. My iron wasn't hot. I just want to make sure that that's there. Okay. So let's go back to the cutting table. Okay, trim that out a little bit to make sure that pink is gone. We're taking the pink out of the Tula pink. Still a little bit of that. But I'm going to have to leave enough that I can stitch because I'm going to be stitching in the white area. Okay, and the bottom of it is kind of frayed, so I'm going to have to go very close to those letters. All right, so now I need to decide where I want this. Now I could center it right there, which might be a very nice place to go. It really does look nice. Or we could get a little funky and go to the side. It could go up here. But you know, this place was almost made for it. So I'm going to fold this in half. Do you have pins? There's my center. I'll fold this in half to find my center. I can take this backing off here. I didn't go right up to the edge, not that it was necessary to, but. Okay, so you just peel the back off this, just like that. And it should look shiny on the back of this. And you're going to place it wherever you want it. So nothing is permanent until you put the iron on it. Okay. Put this underneath to give me a little bit more padding so I can iron it right here without moving you guys again. Okay. So my iron is all the way up. There's no steam. You don't need steam for this. And it doesn't take very long either. It's very quick. Just a little bit of heat on that. Just like that. Okay, so you're going to allow that to cool. And then I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch. I'll take you with me, but we're going to stitch very closely all around the edge, okay? But I think that looks kind of cute. And as I said, if you have any other embellishments, maybe you have buttons that match the fabric you have. Maybe you have something else that's fussy cut and it's not a selvage edge. Maybe it's a, a flower or something else from one of the fabrics that you'd like to showcase. Rick rack, lace, ribbon, anything at all or nothing at all. It's your bag. Again, it's a freestyle bag. Okay, let's meet at the sewing machine and we will just quickly stitch around this before moving on to our next part. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine. Now you could choose a just a general foot. I'm going to use 
I'm not really sure what it's called. I call it an open toe foot because I can see and you guys will be able to see my stitches much easier using this one. So let's pop that on there. I guess if I straightened it up, that helps. <laughs> All right, slide this underneath there. Now I know that some of you will comment and tell me your machines, you don't need to do this, but I, this is just a matter of practice, what I do. One stitch down while holding my top thread and I pull the bobbin thread up through. Then I don't get any bird's nests or anything wonky on the bottom of my fabric. It's just what I do as a matter of habit. Okay, I'm going to use a 2.0 stitch length and I'm going to back tack a couple of stitches. And I'm sewing close to the frayed edge but not on it because I want this to fold. And then while I'm right here, I'm going to snip these threads. And you could certainly go around this more than once. It might even be a good thing to do. You could go around with a narrow zigzag stitch as well, just to also help hold it in place. But anything you need to do or want to do with these panels, you need to do it now before we put them together. I think I'm going to go around another time. I'm going to go just above that stitch. And that's just to make sure that everything stays where it should. I am going to back tack. Yeah, nice and neat. Looks nice. I'll meet you back over at the cutting table. Okay, we have our piece with our salvage edge, which is what I used. You may not have done that. That's fine. You're just along for the ride. <laughs> okay, so we're going to continue uh, where I started off earlier with what you're going to need. I am going to talk about pocket sizes in a minute, but my there's my two pocket pieces. Or as I said, you could do one long one that you then fold once you have your zipper in there. I'll show you more about that in a while. You're going to need your zipper. And again, you could use one like this. The only thing I'm going to tell you is cut this off. So make sure that your zipper is longer than your pocket by, by just a little bit. Then you have room to cut those metal edges off both ends. You don't want to sew through that. But I am going to use the zipper by the yard. Either one of these would work, or you could use a number five zipper as well, which I've done, but I'm using a number three because I feel like that's what most of you have. And again, the lighter is just to singe the edge so it doesn't fray, okay? I have my label. You may or may not have something like that. Maybe you have something that says handmade, okay? Uh, that needs to go on before we put our bag together. For the welt pocket, you may find it helpful, and I'm going to show you how to use it. I'll use it on mine, this Wonder Tape. 
double-sided wash away wonder tape it holds your zipper in place okay and on the back of my pockets i have the sf 101 so as long as you have a lightweight interfacing or you could use a strip of interfacing just on the top of one of these pieces because you need to be able to draw on it to make your opening for your zipper and the other reason other than drawing on it is for the stability of holding the zipper that's why you want the interfacing there so you're going to need a pen you can use a regular pen you can use uh you know air or water erasable pen but no one's going to see it so it doesn't matter and you're going to need scissors rotary cutter those sorts of things okay let's see where we are okay so when we do a welt pocket when we make a welt pocket there's a few things we have to look at my pockets going on this piece and I have to stop and remember which side is up so that I don't put this in the wrong place. You know, like I don't want this to be my top because these are different sizes. This is 15 inches across by 14 and a half up and down. And my, my serpentine stitch is going up and down as well. Now let's see, this was my top. So I'm going to mark the top like this. So there's a few things that you're going to have to figure out what you want to do. So let's talk about the pocket first, okay? And I apologize ahead of time, the light is going to glare on this ruler just because it always does. All right, now you can't put your pocket right up to the edge of your fabric. Now I'm working with 15 inches. So I'm going to say that I don't want to use the two inches along either edge. So that leaves me 11 inches. Well, 11 inches is kind of odd to work with. So let's call it a 10 inch pocket. That's how I came up with the 10 inch wide pocket. Okay. Now, I, it depends on how deep you want your pocket to go. I don't need a really deep pocket on this bag and it's not a really long bag. So you don't want to come down into here because we're going to be taking a square out of here, which is going to make our bottom, you see like this. So you don't want to come down too far. So this is eight and a half by 10, which is just about right for this. And again, this is 14 and a half by 15. So make your pocket according to whatever size your bag is and whatever you want your pocket to be freestyle bag it's your your decision so let's find the middle of this bag use a pretty kitty cat pin and mark that that is halfway okay so i'm going to flip this over Oh, no, I guess I have to stay on the front. Now I know where the top is because I have it with my other pin. So the next thing you want to know is how far down do you want your zipper? Where do you want that zipper to be? Now, we have to remember that we need some area for our straps. We're going to be stitching the top, so we're going to lose some. So I'm going to say, I'm going to come down the zipper itself, probably top of that three inches. So let's say somewhere around there. So you can lay it out and look at it. Where do you want it to be? Okay. This zipper is not going to be at the top of this pocket. Okay. It's going to be down just a little ways. Okay. So we're just kind of looking at it. We're going to eyeball that and say, you know, where do we want it? Okay. And we're, we're also going to be trimming off this. Don't, don't worry about that. We're going to trim that off there. Okay. All right. So the one thing you want is your right side up and the right side down. So you want right sides facing each other. 
find your middle okay I found that middle now I'm going to take my three inch wide ruler lay it like that center that right there okay so this line is right even with my center pin okay take a couple of small pins hold this in place okay all right now around the edge I want you to mark an inch from the edge of the pocket this is your no sew line okay you don't want to sew you have to leave this open or unsewn so your pocket can only come over so far okay I'm going to come down a little bit probably three quarters of an inch here okay so on these sides you're leaving yourself that because when you get done sewing you've got to have a little bit of area here okay just trust me on that that will make sense in a bit okay so you have your line coming down I did that three quarters of an inch then I'm going to come down a quarter of an inch and make a line and a quarter of an inch and make another line and that's what it should look like now I'm going to do this I'm going to make some little triangles They're about a 45 degree angle now there are a lot of different methods for doing a welt pocket okay and everyone's going to tell you something different if you've learned it another way you go with what you know you don't even have to listen to me at all at all but if you've never done one i'll just say you may want to try this method now we're going to go over to the sewing machine now remember this is right sides facing good side to good side okay you are we're going to back tack and sew across this top do not sew down here back tack nice tight stitch like a 1.8 you want this a nice tight stitch back tacked at both the beginning and the end then come here back tack sew across and back tack okay so let's go to the sewing machine and do that and remember do not sew right here normally they're going to tell you to to sew all the way around but I have found that with the thickness of the bags if you've quilted it like this it comes out neater with less puckering at your edges if you do not sew that side and it's not going to come apart because we're going to be stitching over the top of it so you certainly can if you want to sew through that and it still will turn out okay uh, you can do it whichever way you choose but I'm going to sew across the top and the bottom and I'm not going to sew my sides so let's go do that okay and again I'm going to use a 1.8 millimeter stitch length and as usual Marie's going to pull her thread up through look at me so I'm going to back tack and I'm going to do it more than once because this is the area you know you're pulling and on that zipper and you want it to stay in place close to the other end just slow down and watch where your stitches go back tack so forward and back tack I'm not going to cut my thread I'm just going to turn my work
right. Let's go back over to the sewing table. Okay, so this is what you should have. And again, if you wanted to sew the sides, it's not going to hurt anything. You can certainly do that. I just uh, sewed the top and the bottom, but that's totally up to you. And for the next part, you may find it helpful to have a small pair of scissors. They might not be cute little fairy scissors like mine, but... <laughs> my friend Terry gifted me these and they are adorable okay let's remove our pins now there's a few ways you can cut this and I know it's you're feeling terror if you've never done this before you're thinking oh my land I'm going to cut through that but as long as you placed right side to right side and you've done it with me every step of the way, you're gonna be okay. Now you can fold it in half like this and use your scissors and snip. You could take a razor blade, you could do so many different things, but I'm going to use my rotary cutter to make a little snip, just like that, okay? See, I've just made a little hole in that. And you, you could go along there if you want to. I'm not that brave. I'm a chicken, so I'm going to do this. It's a little thick with all those scraps. So Now only cut until you get to this triangle. You're only going to cut to that point, okay? That's why I say these little scissors will come in handy. Okay, because we're going to cut to the corner. I might have to use the big ones to show you because I'm right at, of course, a thick area. <laughs> but you're going to cut right up to your stitch line. Okay. Not into it, but just up to it. And I've got a thick piece, but I, there we go. Just a little bit of patience does the trick. And then over here, I'm going to follow that line. Up to that point. All right, now we're, if your iron isn't heating up, you definitely need to turn your iron on. I'm going to turn mine on. You're going to find that steam will be your friend <laughs> on this, okay? So this looks kind of like a mail pouch. The mailman, postman comes by and puts your mail in. All right, you're going to poke your pocket out through there, okay? Push it all in there. And it's going to take a little bit of finagling to get everything where you want it to be. Okay? But flip that out through there. Now, not everyone... Oops, I didn't get through that line. I knew something didn't work out right there. It should... You should see the triangle here. Mine wasn't cut through this last layer. That's what I was just trimming. So what I want you to do, and I'm not gonna reposition the camera, but I'll meet you back here, is I want you to do this. Flip this out through till it's even, okay? So it's going to look like this. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna press it until you have that opening. And I'll come back and show you what it should look like. Okay, here we go. This is what it looks like from the front. You see our little mail slot. And this is what it looks like from the back. So if you have little wrinkles, it's okay. You can flip this right back out and trim closer to your corner if you need to, because a lot of times it will pucker because of that. 
I have mine as close as I can get it, but I have a little bit of puckering because of the thickness, okay? You're not going to avoid that altogether because of the thickness of our panel. But as you can see, it doesn't show on the front, so it doesn't matter to us. So the next thing is our zipper. All right, so I used a lot of heat to get this to where it is. All right, uh, I guess I'll turn my iron back on. <laughs> um, and I also told you about the zipper tape, which I will use this time. I have trimmed my zipper, okay? And again, if you're using a zipper by the yard and you don't know how to put this on, I'm going to link a short video that I did uh, showing how to use one of these. They have the metal, made of metal. You can use a kitchen fork. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Or you can simply uh, finagle it onto there, which I can do. It just sometimes takes me a while. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, my zipper extends past my pocket, and that's perfectly fine. It's not going to hurt a thing, but it doesn't go this way. It's going to go this way. So considering how this is, you need to decide which way you want your pull. Do you want it here? Do you want it here? So first things first, this zipper tape. Now, this zipper tape is supposed to go on like so. Let me move this out of the way. And then you peel it off. I don't find that it peels off very well unless I apply a bit of heat. Whoops, I used my good scissors for that. Oopsie. So what I do is I just apply a very little bit of heat, and I do mean a very little bit. And I find that it peels easier. Now that's not to say that it's going to do it right now, because of course it wouldn't, right? But I see people just put that on and peel it back, and I don't know how they do it, because it does not work that well for me. But as long as you get the uh, one of the edges, I find it does work better this way. It almost looks like it has little bubbles on it when you apply the heat. So you have to separate. There's two layers of it, of course, the sticky and the pull. Okay, I got it by holding the pin underneath there and then grabbing onto that. All right, so let's get the second piece on there. I didn't really need it as long as what this one is. And when I first purchased zipper tape like this, I found it in the 1 8 inch wide, which I prefer over this quarter inch. Now this does wash away. It's completely gone once you wash it. So you don't have to worry about it being you know, anywhere where you don't want it. And again, I'm going to apply heat. This time I'm going to apply a little bit more because I know it works better for me. Maybe it's just the brand that I have. I'm not sure. But I do have to let it cool or it won't separate. There we go. I can see the separate layers now. To fold it back just like that okay now I'm going to move my zipper over now this can take a, a few times of moving it around when you're using the zipper tape it's I used to use the zipper tape a lot when I was first starting out generally I don't anymore so simply because of what's going to happen here. We're going to be positioning and repositioning. So you just want to make sure that you have about equal amounts side to side on your zipper, okay? So I put it on the edge that's closed, that's zipped up first. You want it to be approximately the same 
amount of your zipper color showing through top and bottom. And that's where you have to reposition a little bit. I'm going to close my zipper a little more and make it a little easier. Keep your pocket color folded if it comes unfolded, but that's why we ironed it as well as we did so that it stays in place. When you're happy with how that looks, I don't want that string. <laughs> there it is. And there again, they say you just push that down. I don't know how much heat I can get through here, but I find that the heat helps that zipper tape to bond. show you this zipper again so it, if you used one of these zippers here just make sure as I said that you're cutting off this metal end and then there's two little metal ends there and it works the exact same way as what we just did okay so I'm going to pin because over here I've got a little bit of a flap here going on so I'm kind of pushing my zipper together a little bit, and I'm going to pin that in place. I'm going to pin on the other side. You can pin as little or as much as you want. There's not a whole lot of room to play around because the zipper doesn't go very far up behind there, okay, to pin. Like if you put a pin, you'd have to put it right here. Now, we're going to go over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch. We're going to top stitch around here. Now, I'm going to back tack a few times on the beginning and the end because I feel that is where most of the strength of the stitch is needed. So I'll meet you over at the sewing machine and we'll talk about stitch length when we get there. Okay, I am at the sewing machine. I have my stitch length set to 2.5. I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread by going one complete rotation. Grab onto that. And if you want, you could use a 3.0 stitch length. That would be absolutely fine. Totally up to you. And as far as thread goes, you can use a coordinating thread or you could use uh, something that contrasts. So as you see, I went back and forth a couple of the stitches to reinforce that, that edge. The only bad part for me is I have a seam right here <laughs> and that was not good placement for my zipper along those scraps. But if you've made a scrappy bag like I have, you may run into that. It's not a, it's not a big problem, it's just something that you have to deal with. And you may need to go a bit slower. But I'm just stitching about an eighth of an inch from that edge and I'm going to have to move my zipper pull here in just a moment. Okay, so stop with your needle in the down position and grab your zipper pull and move it past. Lower your presser foot and continue. I always like to give it a little extra stitch there. Now that is not stuck under there the way it was. 
I'm going to grab onto that fabric. I guess there's only so much I can do. That's all right. It won't hurt anything. Just a little more pink showing, that's all. You know, a 3.0 stitch length looks better as far as top stitching goes. Again, I'm going to lift my presser foot and move my zipper pull out of the way. Uh, a 3.0 looks much nicer. The only reason I don't use it is because I figure the 2.5 is a little bit of a tighter stitch, so possibly it's going to make everything that much more secure. All right, so this is what you should have. Sorry, mine's kind of crinkled up. You'll see it back over at the table, but it's it's all stitched, all right? So let's go back over to the table. We're gonna put this pocket together. Okay, here we go. This is what it should look like. I'm going to take a pair of old scissors and I'm not going to trim it really close, but probably, I should do it just inside the pocket. And I'm going to use my lighter. This isn't like 100% necessary, but it surely does help it from fraying. Okay, looks like this from one side, looks like this from the other. So turn it this way, you have the right side of your pocket showing up. Take this other part of your pocket. Now, if you use the long piece, like what I said, I normally use one piece and then I flip it up. This is what I was talking about. So you would just double the length of what you worked with the first time, you see and put this like this. All right, so just make sure that the top is, that you have enough to sew through your two layers. Just like this. One more and I should be good. Okay, now, pay close attention. <laughs> All right, fold this back, okay? And you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch, three eighths, whatever you wanna use. I'm going to use a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna back tack and I'm going to stitch and I'm going to Leave this down. You don't want to sew through your panel. You're going to sew along here, along here, and then move that out of the way again and sew across the top, okay? So don't sew this down to the panel. You're just sewing your pocket layers together, okay? Go all the way around. You don't need to leave an opening because the pocket is here. Okay, so stitch that, and then I'll show you what it will look like. All right, my pocket's all sewn around. So what should be happening on your side is when you open that pocket, open the zipper, that's what you should have. All of it is closed in. All right, that part is done. What else do we have? Well, of course, you could put a pocket on both sides or a different kind of pocket or no pocket at all on either. <laughs> I like, whoops, I put the wrong piece away. I like to put 
my label on the same side as the zipper. I like to put it just above the zipper. So I'm going to fold it in half again and find my midway point. Put a pin in it. And I always check it with the, yep, spot on. All right, now, I'm not sure what your labels are like compared to mine. Mine iron in place and then are stitched down similar to the heat and bond that we used over on that. Basically the same idea. So I fold, I peeled the back off mine. I fold it in half to find the, the halfway point. Oh, I have to cover up that cute little uh, raccoon, and I just lost my halfway point, didn't I? Right there. Going to bring that down, just like that. That way... I'm not completely covering up that adorable little raccoon. He's still there. So just a little bit of heat. And then I stitch that down using the 2.5 millimeter stitch length because everything, as I said, anything that's happening to these panels has to happen before our next step. I will stitch that and be right back. Okay, there it is. All stitched in place. Looking very nice, centered. I really like these one inch by two inch labels. So there's my two sides for this freestyle bag. Now this bag that I showed you at the beginning, or this these panels that I showed you, I don't know if I'm going to put the uh, welt pocket. I, I believe I'm, I'm going to leave that off from this one. And we're going to do something different with the inside of this than what we do to the inside of this. So before the next tutorial in two weeks, this is what I want you to do. You get, if you're doing the welt pocket, do the welt pocket you get that done then you're going to need lining fabric your lining fabric should exactly measure the same thing as your outer panels okay they need to measure the same now i prefer i don't have it on here yet but i prefer to put some interfacing on my lining it is not necessary. I don't always do it, but I do prefer it for this bag. So if you want, you can use a lightweight interfacing. You could use SF-101. That's what I have on hand, so I'll be using that. And again, the link will be below. The other thing you're going to need, this is just representative. It is not it. I'm going to grab some Tula Pink fabric to make my inner pockets. So you're going to need some fabrics if you're going to choose some inside pockets. I'm going to show you three different ways to put pockets inside this, this freestyle tote bag. And on mine, I'm going to have pocket on this one and a pocket on this one. So Inside, both of my lining sides will have pockets. And if you're going to attach pockets, you need to have interfacing. It helps uh, to make the fabric sturdier and it will hold the stitching better. So prep your fabrics. So again, you want two lining pieces that are the exact same measurement as your outer panel. And then you're going to need some pocket fabric. So interface your lining, grab some extra for your pockets, and, you know, 
Keep some of the interfacing on hand. You may want it for your pockets. You also want to be thinking about your straps that you're going to use. Now you can use something that's already pre-made. Uh, you know, you can get that stuff at most craft stores, one inch wide, one and a quarter, whatever. Uh, you could buy leather. I prefer to make my own straps. So I believe that for this one, I'm going to use scraps that will match with this and I'm going to piece them together. Okay. Uh, so you can be thinking about what you're going to use for straps on your bag, although you do have some time to think about that. So next time we're going to work on the lining. The time after that, it's going to be the straps and finishing up. Okay. So this has been so fun and I am so excited to see everyone's bags. I really am. I think this is going to be great. I hope that this was informative for you. I hope that you give it a try. You don't have to do this pocket, but I think you'll be pretty pleased if you try it. Nobody's going to know if it's a little bit wonky and they're not even going to care if it is. But really, step out of your comfort zone a little bit and do that. Also, I wanted to mention, when you flip this pocket out and you're ironing it, and if it doesn't fit just right, if it's too puckered, first thing, flip it back out and trim that triangle a little bit. Just get close. If you overclip, just stitch over it again. No harm, no foul, really. If you don't like the way your top stitching turned out, grab a seam ripper and, and stitch it again. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so until next time, I hope you have fun. Give this a shot and we will go on to our lining and some very exciting pocket options for inside. So just be thinking, do you want it to hold your phone, your sunglasses, your keys? What is it? Okay, what is it you want your pockets to do? Because I'm going to give you some very fun options for those pockets. And I'm going to make some scrappy pockets for at least one of mine. It's going to be scrappy just like the outside of this one. And I have big exciting plans for this one. I already have my lining cut out for that. I was gifted some fabric this week. So the lining for my rooster bag is this. Isn't that cute? That's going to make a really nice lining. And I have this already backed with my SF-101 because I am so excited for this bag. Okay, so until next time, you take care. Have fun sewing. I hope you really have fun with this project. And remember, be kind out there. The world needs more of that. And I'll see you next time right here at Marie's Scrappy Creations. Bye-bye.